Hello and welcome to the Enduro World Series show, the show that brings you the inside line of all the racing this season. And what a season it has been, with just 90 points separating the top three men on a hotly contested women's series as we come into those final two rounds across Montana and Finale Ligri. It's been a stellar year for EMTV racing and the most comprehensive calendar to date. So let's take a look back at all the action from earlier in the season. The 2022 EWSE season picked up where it left off in the hills of the Tweed Valley in Scotland. Edgar Carbayo Gonzalez took the first win of the year, controlling the race with conviction, with eight stage wins cementing his place on the top step of the podium. Italian Andrea Garibo took second after a solid performance all day, and Welsh rider Lee Johnson took third. Laura Charles bettered Gonzalez with nine stage victories and the race win followed by Tracy Mosley in second and breakout Italian Alia Marcellini in third. Round two headed to the Austro-Slovenian border as riders race seven stages across the two countries. Drama in the women's field as series leader Laura Shaw was out with a mechanical. Less than five seconds separated the remaining women as Marcellini, riding high after her strong performance at Tweed Valley, took the win ahead of Flo Espinera and the third place, Sofia Wiedenrock. Yannick Pontal was back to his winning ways in another closely fought men's race. Thiago Ladeira crossed the line of the final stage just 2.22 seconds back, narrowly beating Carballo Gonzalez to the second step as the Spaniard came in 2.61 seconds behind Pontal's time after 35 minutes of racing. Our first ever standalone EWSE race took place in the stunning, sometimes extraterrestrial landscape of Valberg, France. Lighting a spark under the French riders as they took over the podium in the men's field. Alex Rideau secured his first EWSE win, Adrian Day in second and Antoine Roge completed the podium. More drama in the women's as Isabel Cordurier suffered a horrific foot injury, forcing her retirement and Alia Marcellini was also out due to illness, leaving Laura Charles and Flo Espinera to battle it out over the remaining stages. Espinera was thwarted again as Charles took first place off the Chilean. Despite this, the consistent Espinera leads the overall as we come into the final two rounds and will surely be on the hunt for that elusive win. The men's overall is all to play for, just 90 points separate Pontal, Gonzalez and Garibo. Will it be the winner of the first ever EWSE to take the title? The Spaniard, hot on his heels, or relative newcomer to the sharp end, Andrea Garibo? With only two rounds remaining to race, it's all to play for. E-bikes are at the forefront of mountain bike development with bigger batteries, more powerful motors and electronically integrated suspension and gears frequently finding their way onto riders' bikes. Let's take a look around the pits and see what hot tech we can find. Even though it was the final race of the year, that doesn't mean that there wasn't some exciting tech on show during EWSE in Finale. The Bosch Performance Line CX motor is one of the best around, particularly on the power stages of the EWSE, where you get some of the most difficult climbing in all of mountain biking. So you might be thinking, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, not one to rest on their laurels. Bosch have recently released the CX race version of their famous motor. Spotted on our bay a factory racing rider Edgar Carballo Gonzalez's bike, the new motor has lost some weight, now coming in at 2.75 kilos compared to 2.9 on the standard model. While much of the spec between the CX Race and the standard CX remains the same, you now get an extra mode called Race, which boosts the pedal assist from 340% to 400%. If you want to learn more, there's a link in the video description to a full first ride. Over at the Yeti Pits, we also spotted their riders testing Shimano's new EP801 auto shift system, which incorporates the brand's automatic shifting capabilities. As you'd expect, this means riders on the system don't have to worry about shifting as the auto shift does it for them. However, it can still be overridden or adjusted by the rider as needed. Interestingly, it doesn't require an extra battery as it's incorporated straight into the Shimano Di2 battery which we suspect will make pro mechanics the world over rejoice. Shimano were keen to point out that this exciting technology is still very much in the development phase, so don't expect to find it in the shops anytime soon. But 
If it ends up being good enough for the Yeti Pro riders, we expect it'll be more than good enough for the rest of us. While new motors and automatic shifting are exciting, sometimes you can't beat a good old custom paint job. Like this one from Giant Factory Racing's Josh Carlson. Josh specs his bike differently depending on if he's racing XC or Enduro. And here we have it in full Enduro race trim. So that means more travel, bigger gearing and beefier wheels to deal with the demands of an EWSE race. I think the best part of my uh, bike here for the EWSE is the custom paint job. My Trans E Advance has an amazing gold and green paint job with a custom gold Fox 36 fork. It's got a couple of my uh, national championship uh, logos down here, which is super cool. And, and I'm very proud to race this bike and represent Australia and uh, run the national colors for this 2022 Enduro World Series E season. Some great tech here at the final round and finale Ligri, but what happened in the penultimate round of Crans Montana two weeks ago? I sat down with Giant Factory Racing's Josh Carlson to find out. Josh, cast your mind back now, Switzerland, EWSE, Crom Montana, brutally difficult race for you guys. Whoa, the changing weather, the treacherous conditions out in the hills, it was really, really hard to navigate. Um, the rocks just became so slippery. As we came down the mountain for like stage five and stage six, it definitely got a lot drier and a lot faster. Um, but when we were up in the high alpine trails up there, it was really, really hard to determine whether there was any grip whatsoever. I mean, at the start of our start of our second loop, our uh, third loop, sorry, uh, Mick Hanna and myself and some of the other guys, we just physically couldn't ride. The dirt was so slippery, we couldn't even stand up. Uh, there's a lot of varied conditions. A lot of altitude as well. You're a lot two, of altitude, two yeah. Two and a half thousand meters yep. um, at the top. And what you find with that, um, a lot of very cold, wet mornings. And then oh. by midday, very, very hot. Trails are yep. dry in difficult conditions. Does it affect e-bike racing more than regular bike racing when there's that lack of traction there's that overnight rain overnight moisture because you sure. are relying on grip to climb up for stuff. sure and for us princess little pros <laughs> we're used to going last so the e-bikes we go first so lining up for the up on the ridge there in stage two very first thing in the morning there was a bit of overnight rain we really didn't know how stage two was going to go and going down there was just trial by error you could let the brakes go you get stuck in a rut you just had to slap that thing and hold on for dear life. So it was definitely a bit of a wild ride to start the day. Sophia Wiedenroth taking her first win for Specialized. She's a racer who's really grown into e-bikes. She's yep. found her niche there, hasn't she? Big time. And that was a great performance for her and it's great for her confidence to come away with a win. And you know, there was a lot of climbing which helped her, but she had to make it happen on the descents and there was a lot of descending for that, that massive big mountain day. Uh, Yannick Pontal as well, he said all year long that he is going for the title, unrelentingly going for the title, very much in the Nico Villio French mold of, I don't have to win every stage, I don't even have to win every race. Yep. I have to be on podium. Yep. Took the win there. I mean, that was a huge piece in his, in his world championship campaign. Um, again, if you're consistent every round, regardless of the conditions, regardless of the track, you've got to be there every single race. And he put in a huge performance that weekend, which I think will seal him the deal. Flo Espanera heading for the title, you'd have to say. She's looking good for it, but hasn't won a race yet. Is that, does that play in your head? Would yeah. you mean like, a title's a title? Do you want to win one without having won a race? It's always nice to be number one going into next season and winning the championship is the ultimate goal. But as an athlete, as a rider, you, you, you want to win. Like winning is what we all chase. And winning the championship is great, but when you're winning it by being consistent and you've never had that one big victory, it always just feels a little hollow. I mean, sure, it's gonna, it's gonna feel great. If she does come away with the championship and doesn't win, <laughs> she's still number one and she is still the world champion. But if she can claim, claim that very first victory, it'll definitely make it a little bit sweeter and uh, just make it feel a little bit more special. Well, we're here in Finale Ligari. There are a lot of off-duty Enduro World Series racers floating about who might just fancy a little nibble at EWSE, test the waters out, see how things work out. EWSE has progressed so far in the last two years. Do you think we could see an EWS racer take the win or has it become so specialist now that they're gonna be all at sea? I don't think so. I mean, all the EWS guys come and watch our power stages and they're very intrigued to watch the EWS E day. I mean, we, we do some massive days throughout the season. So a lot of them, their reaction is like, whoa, that's a little bit too much. <laughs> so I definitely think one of them could win. I mean, they are the best mountain bike riders on this planet. Josh, some of the biggest crashes I've managed to have 
off my e-bike, of which there are many, have come in wet conditions because all of a sudden you realise that the thing's a lot heavier and it doesn't necessarily want to turn or break as well as you think it does. <laughs> you guys had a lot of moisture on those power stages. How difficult does that make it? Oh, man, and it, it was super difficult. And from what we saw it in practice, and we didn't really have time to go and check out the main power stage. So we had two loops of the power stage up in the Alpine, which was super slippery rocks. <laughs> diabolical to ride it was just hectic but the lower power stage was really really long and when we saw it in practice there was a couple of lines we could take in the dry the roots and rocks were dry and you could kind of make your way up it but as soon as we got a whole bunch of moisture in there it made some of the lines just practically impossible to ride so all of a sudden on a very steep power stage those time gaps just become catastrophic so when you have one little dab i missed multiple times and had to run up the hill so all of a sudden you are bleeding time in the overall so when you make a mistake on a downhill stage it's like maybe three seven maybe 10 seconds at most if you do that in a power stage that can blow out to 20 or 30 or one minute and all of a sudden your entire day is over so um it's very very difficult to navigate it's very difficult to go on the fly and just figure out what's happening because you've got one line chosen you don't get too many practice runs of the power stages so you've kind of got to like Feel it as you go and just hope for the best. There we go then, Switzerland, as ever, a very difficult place to race bikes. So that's the story so far on to this weekend and Finale Ligri did not disappoint, providing some incredible racing and a fantastic end to the season. Let's take a closer look at what went down. Well, joining me now, fresh from the field, fresh from a day's work, Josh Carlson. Josh, back in the top 10, how was your race? What a day. I mean, I'm very happy to finish back in the top 10. I had a couple of uh, second and third and top 10 results throughout the whole day. Definitely uh, cost myself a top five with the power stages. Um, it's a big battle out there at the moment and, and it's part of the evolution of the EWSE. But, um, you know, to finish in the top 10 and hopefully squeak into that top 10 overall, it's a, a relieving way to finish a pretty long and tough season for sure. Let's talk about our winners then, Flo Espinera, great to see, she's been great all year, she's fended off all comers, but she said all year that she didn't really want to win a title yeah. without winning a race, yep. and she's come to the last race of the season and absolutely smashed it. And what a way to go out, like I mean any, every champion wants, no one wants to win a championship without winning, mm -hmm. I mean it feels so much better when you can win a race, and then it feels like, it almost makes you feel like you earned it, you know, when, you, when you're consistent it's great and that's what wins championships. But it always feels nice to get that win in the bag. So for her to finish the season off with a win, and it's just the cherry on top for winning the championship. And again, she had to earn it. She had to earn it the hard, the hard way. Unbelievable. Now, a big story throughout the field in this race as well was the fact that we had a lot of off-duty Enduro World Series stars yeah. throughout both packs. <music> Men's race won by Adrian Day, who he played the he played the EWSE strategy to a T, didn't he? In that Perfect. he he took the lead on the last power stage and then managed it two more stages to go. Yeah, absolutely fantastic to see Adrian get a win. Very Nico Vuglio esque. Mm. I mean, Nico's done that over the years. He's obviously one of the greatest mountain bike riders of all time. But Nico did a similar thing, and Adrian did that as well. He performed great in the power stages. Um, and held it together on the other stages. So he was riding great all day, but he also managed the power stages, and that was a deciding factor in claiming the victory here for this final round. I enjoy really the second loop. We have three loops. The second and third was my favorite, so the result was, uh, was good. I enjoyed it a lot. Two other, uh, two other let's say, visiting EWSE <laughs> racers uh, in second place. Hattie Horndon, Richie Rude. Yep. How did you rate them today? Great. I mean, Richie, Richie's Richie rude. Like, of course he's going to perform well. <laughs> and here in Finale, with this particular type of course, suits Richie to a T. But Richie's part of the Fat Kid Club with me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's 80, 85, 90 kilos. He's a big lad. He's a big unit. Can ride a bike. One of the most powerful athletes in the world. Not mm -hmm. just mountain bike riders, not just enduro athletes. He is a powerful, one of a kind Every athlete. year, I forget just how big a guy he is yeah. and you see him for the first time at the start of the season yeah. and he's like a rugby player he is if people yeah. haven't met him before yep. that's maybe an easy comparison to make he's yep. just a big unit it was a big day on the e-bikes um you know i think we started at eight and finished 3 30 so yeah good time like really good course here in finale just 
you know, a lot of good tracks, tight, fast, rocky, and yeah, really enjoyed it. Ended up third, so that's, that's pretty awesome. And it's one of the most dense fields of talent we've ever seen in EWS E history. With so many riders finishing the season the last couple of weeks uh, and coming across having an opportunity to race their e-bikes. Finale as well, I mean you raced, you've been racing here for 10 years, yeah. you know, this is like the consummate enduro venue. How tough was today's course by finale standards? It was probably classically finale. finale. I would say uh, Francesco mentioned to me earlier last week um, that it was going to be a finale of old, reinvigorated for e-bikes and that's exactly what it was. I mean our loop one was super rocky, janky, hard, um, <laughs> super fast, so if you're willing to send it, it was great. If you come undone, you were gonna come undone in a big way. <laughs> and then the second loop, we got out into the loam and some dirt out in the woods. So um, it was definitely some classics. It was a very finale typical race day. And again, another fantastic finish to the season uh, for, for one of our, our standard e-bike um, e bike races. Now, I'm gonna ask you, we do this traditionally for your man, woman, player of the match. I'm gonna pep you though, because it's the last one of the year and you always say who I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna go first. Oh. And I'm going to say Tracy Mosley, never outside of the top five on the stages, apart from the first one, former EWS champion, and just, she's just Timo, isn't she? She's just so impressive. Talent never leaves. I mean, yeah, she can say she's distracted and she's had a baby and she's been managing the team and all this stuff, but she is one of the greatest athletes we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Mountain men, women, downhill, enduro. She's been there, done that, and she's still performing now, and she had to earn it. You know, that's, that course was brutal. There was a lot going on out there. There was a lot of risk. And for her to be so consistent throughout that entire day with mechanicals and crashes and rocks and speed and spectators and dogs running out in the track, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot going on. So for her to maintain that top five all day, yeah, man, I'm, I'm not mad about that decision at all. <laughs> who's, your, who's yours then? Uh, I think Richie. I think Richie really impressed me. Richie definitely could have exploded <laughs> here today with so many rocks. Uh, and being such an aggressive rider. Um, uh, another thing that catches a lot of normal enduro bike athletes out is, is being aggressive on the e-bike because it can really get away from you. So he managed that well today, stage after stage after stage. The power stages did cost him a little bit, but he still performed really well on those power stages. So shows that there's some nice things coming from Shimano and, and their brand new motor, which is great. And uh, I'm really, really stoked for that dude to come away with a podium in his first ever EWS e race and uh, hopefully we can see a little bit more of Richie Root on the e-bike moving so, forward. Josh, an amazing set of results, an amazing set of rides up and down both top tens, but what do you think today on the course was the deciding factor? Well, the terrain out in the hills was definitely difficult. I mean, it was very janky. It was very, like we mentioned, finale-esque. So you had to manage your bike. Um, it was very easy to go offline and just destroy your entire day. There was broken wheels, drive trains, chains all kinds of stuff. But the deciding factor today was the multiple power stages. So the first one was quite rocky and technical and reasonably short in power stage uh, terms. Yeah. <laughs> but the power stages out there in the hills, uh, stage seven and, or stage six and stage 10, they were pretty long, pretty steep, and they were a massive deciding factor today. There were some huge time gaps to be made up. And uh, the riders who managed that well and were light enough and had the good, good equipment to perform well on those stages definitely made a big, big impact on the race. Uh, guys like Tiago and Richie and Adrian, they put in good performances to maintain their positions and didn't sacrifice their results to put in on the downhill stages, but they were definitely the, the deciding factor in today's race here. Well, there we go then. What an amazing finish to the season. Two new champions have been crowned here at Enduro Racing's spiritual home. Chilean rider Flo Espinera being one of them. We caught up with her before the race to see what makes the Pink Bike Academy alumni tick. My name is Flores Piñeira. I'm originally from Chile and now I'm living in Canada, in Whistler, and I race bikes for Orve and Duro Team. I started mountain biking because of my dad. When I was 10, he built me my first mountain bike and we started going out to the mountains. About Pink Bike Academy, it's a funny story. I had just moved to Canada. I was doing quarantine, like leaving all my dreams about racing mountain biking, mountain bike behind. That's why I moved to Canada. 
and I was on Instagram and suddenly a friend sent me the ad of Pink Bay Academy and told me like you should apply and I was like oh I don't know I just start a new life here and uh, it was quite a big decision to stop uh, racing and after a few days I was still quarantined watch another ad of Ping by Academy came through and I was okay what the hell I'm gonna apply and, and apply and then I got in. Of course I won, that's why I'm here and this is the first time, the first year in my life that I could fully commit to just train and be fully focused on my performance. I'm not working, I quit my job after winning Ping Bay Academy and counting on the resources to do so. That's why I'm really happy that everything has go really good because all the hard work has paid off. So overall, I think I'm, I have a lot of determination in life. Uh, when I set a goal, I commit, I fully commit to it. Uh, I do all the job that is required. Being on the Orvea Enduro team, it's awesome. I always surprised on how this factory support makes a huge difference, not only in the resources, but also having the staff behind you, like counting on a team with Greg, the physio, Primos, the team manager, the mechanics that takes for me, takes a lot of, of things out of my mind and then I can just be thinking about performing and deliver the best result I can. Yeah, being away a lot during the season has been in sometimes harder than what I thought, but obviously during the season we start knowing more each other and now by the end of the season we just feel like a huge family and I think that's also really important when, when you need to perform. It's to feel comfortable with your team and to feel that you're with people that care about you and we are a big family at the end of the day. Um, with normal bike, the regular EWS has been way better than I expected. Uh, I never thought that I could make a podium and Whistler was just incredible. And uh, My main goal for this season was to win the overall of e-bike racing. That was a big task because until this year I have never been in an e-bike. So I'm happy that coming to the last round I'm almost there and I would love to crown this season with a good result tomorrow. Today race in Finale Ligure of course is exciting race. She is able to win the race because she is focused and uh, performing really good and from this point we, we race today a little bit more tactically and the, the win of today race is not primary goal because the goal is uh, the championship, the season overall. Yeah, I've known that how good she is as a rider for, for many years, probably that's looking talking back six, eight years I guess now. And it's just so cool that often you, they don't get chance. People from outside of Europe and North America don't always get the same opportunities to, to get that, that foot in the door, to get on a pro team and get the opportunity to see that, get that exposure. And um, it's awesome her journey that she's been on to get where she is now. And it's only now we're getting to see how good her riding is, you know, on the world level. So super cool. Hopefully it's the beginning of another superstar from a country that doesn't always get the same opportunities that we do sometimes. I feel that being on Ping Bay Academy and winning it, it was my second and last chance of being a professional mountain bike racer. And yeah, that's been awesome. I think that approach for me has given me a really good mindset for this season. Like 
I feel I have everything to win, nothing to lose, and that's my main mental setup in every race. Like, you never know in life how things are gonna go, and being here is a gift, and I'm really grateful. I'm not just gonna do the best I can and go full in. What an amazing story and an incredible season for Flo Espanera. When most of us would have thrown in the towel, they just kept going and achieved their dream. Well, that's all for this episode and all for this season. We'll be back next year with even more EMTB racing. <laughs>